What's going on, 909ers? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're at Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and we are actually here. I don't know if I would say to pay our respects to this person, but nevertheless, we are here to see the grave of Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. Uh, let's go check it out together and talk a little bit about him. And then we're going to go check out where his life tragically ended. Guys, so Benjamin Bugsy Siegel, born February 28th, 1906, and passed away June 20th, 1947. Benjamin Siegel, Bugsy Siegel, you guys know the name. He was an American mobster who was the driving force behind the development of the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, Siegel was influential in the Jewish mob along with his childhood friend and fellow gangster, Meyer Lansky. He also had significant influence within the Italian American Mafia and the largely Italian Jewish National Crime Syndicate. He was described as uh, well, handsome, charismatic, and he became one of the first front page celebrity gangsters. Benjamin was one of the founders and leaders of Murder, Inc., and became a bootlegger during the American Prohibition. The 21st Amendment was passed in 1933, repealing Prohibition. He then turned to gambling. In 1936, he left New York and moved to California. His time as a mobster during this period was mainly as a hitman and muscle. In 1941, Benjamin was tried for the murder of friend and fellow mobster Harry Greenberg. He was acquitted in 1942. Benjamin traveled to Las Vegas, Nevada, where he handled and financed some of the original casinos. He assisted developer William R. Wilkerson's Flamingo Hotel after Wilkerson ran out of funds. Benjamin assumed control of the project and managed the final stages of construction. The Flamingo opened on December 26, 1946 in a driving rainstorm, resulting in a poor reception and technical difficulties. It soon closed. The Flamingo reopened in March of 1947 with a finished hotel, but by then his mob partners were convinced that an estimated one million dollars of construction budget overran had been skimmed by Siegel's girlfriend, Virginia Hill, or by both of them. On June 20th, 1947, Siegel was shot dead by a sniper through the window of Hill's Linden Drive mansion in Beverly Hills, California. The day after Benjamin's death, the Los Angeles Herald Express carried a photograph on its front page from the morgue of Siegel's bare right foot with a toe tag. Although Siegel's homicide occurred in Beverly Hills, his death thrust Las Vegas into the national spotlight as photographs of his lifeless body were published in newspapers throughout the country. The day after Benjamin's demise, David Berman and his Las Vegas mob associates, Sedway and Gus Greenbaum, walked into the Flamingo and took over operations of the hotel and casino. Okay, so this guy, Mo Sedway, was an American businessman and mobster, of course, associated with Bugsy Siegel. And uh, there's rumors, there's a big rumor that he is the one that uh, put the hit out on Bugsy, uh, Bugsy Siegel. He is also the one that is credited for making the, uh, the Flamingo in Las Vegas, which is actually still in operation and 
open today. Uh, he was credited for making it a success after uh, Bugsy Siegel's demise. It's crazy that this could potentially be the guy who took out Bugsy and <laughs> they are just, just in firing range of each other. Right down there. If you guys could see in the, the center of the screen. They're literally in firing range of each other. Mo Sedway and Bugsy Siegel. What a crazy story. So now that we're done here with Bugsy's grave, I just want to point out that this is the, uh, the same hallway from well, if you're a Rocky fan, this is the same hallway from Rocky Three where they had Mick's funeral. And this vacant, empty, empty plot, maybe it's empty, maybe it's not, I don't know. But unmarked plot is where they would have been burying Mick. Because you could tell this is the exact spot because of this doorway. You could see clearly in the background. Then you count six plots over. And you go down one and you see the curtain for, you know, the plot to where they're about to insert Mick. Of course, you never see that in the movie, but this plot here would have been Mick's. So just a little something extra to look for if you guys are coming out to uh, Bugsy Siegel's grave. Okay, so on the night of June 20th, 1947, a gunman with a military-style rifle, actually, I believe, from what I've read, walked up this driveway here and fired into the living room windows. A total of nine shots. Bugsy was hit twice in the face, twice in the chest, Right in one of these windows here. And aside from the two to the face, two to the chest, there were five other shots that missed. So a total of nine shots fired. It's a very nice house, especially for back in the day. I'm sure this was considered a huge house at one point. And again, guys, I'm sorry for the noise in the background. But this is the uh, the home where uh, Bugsy lost his life. N now, I heard a few things. I think the most common story is the house was rented. The home actually didn't belong to him, but wasn't uh, either his or his girlfriend at the time. It was in their possession because they were the rentees. So he did not own this house. It was rented by either his self or his girlfriend. Again, there's conflicting stories there on who's who was renting the property. Maybe it was them together. Who knows? But we do know this was a rented property, never owned by Bugsy. But yet he lost his life right there. About 35, 40 feet away from where I'm standing now. Wow. So crazy. And the case is actually still considered unsolved because they were actually never able to convict anybody on, on the crime. Man, this is a beautiful home though. I'll see if I'm uh, able to flash up some pictures if I haven't done so already. I don't want to uh, be too invasive. Looks like they do have their driveway open there. But that is the home. That is a crazy looking door if you guys can see that. Of 
course, no video about Bugs and Siegel is ever complete unless it showcases Casino in it. And of course, there's a couple of nods to Bugsy here. Let's go check them out together. And Bugsy's bar. Somebody just won. Wherever it was, somebody just won. <laughs> but Bugsy's bar here at the Flamingo. We got the uh, neon flamingo feathers. This is very cool. Bugsy's bar. And then inside of the casino, they have a steakhouse. Bugsy and Myers, obviously. Bugsy. It's an homage to Bugsy Siegel. And of course, if you can't tell where we're at, this is the Flamingo in Las Vegas where they have this monument to Benjamin Bugsy Siegel. He's basically credited with, uh, you know, being coming up with the idea for Vegas, modern day Vegas. Yeah, he didn't get the uh, the chance to see the success of the flamingo or anything, because you know, as we already know, he was gunned down in his rented home where we were just visiting. You guys can pause and read this if you need to. Hmm. I don't know why this uh, <laughs> doesn't exactly look like him. Again, one more time, it'll pan up. There you go. And again, the flamingo. Obviously, you know, the flamingo doesn't look anything like it did. An opening day. But, alright guys, thank you so much for everybody who's been liking and commenting on the videos. If you guys watch this video to the end, just comment any emoji along with your comment. This will let me know that you guys made it to the end. Just pick your favorite emoji. I usually say do the black heart. But uh, if you guys don't want to leave the black heart, that's cool. Any emoji is fine. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Bartender, Coors Light, please.